Welcome back folks. I'm just going to do um, a quick video on uh, something that I mentioned in uh, a couple forums and on a YouTube uh, reply I think on uh, one of Chuck's Film at Friday videos about using a micro torch to smooth and um, PLA and various plastic prints. Now, I only really like to do this on PLA, but I've been doing it a lot longer than I've had a 3D printer. Uh, anytime I've cut plastic in the past, uh, regardless of what it was, ABS or anything like that, I've always used a pencil torch to get rid of the sanding marks. just quickly melts the edges. Um, I didn't get many good shots of this uh, before, but I did use the... Uh, what is the focus here? Who knows? I did use it to uh, clean up some of the sanding marks and file marks on the inside of <clears throat> that part, which is part of the uh, x-axis gantry from my uh, 3D printer project. What you have on some parts is you get, um, let's see if this will focus here. Hmm. I think the little light has gone funny. Here we go. So this is the an alien head model. There we go. I think I've managed to lock the focus here. So, um, so you can see it needs to be smooth, but there's lots of those little concentric lines, and I'm going to try and smoothen that right up to a glass finish. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. Uh, sometimes you have some sanding. This is the one I'm going to do first. And uh, you've got these sort of white or dusty marks from the abrasion of a, a file, or, or in this case, this was a sanding board. Sometimes you have some weird uh, underhang on a layer. Um, this will be a special one. I'm going to maybe start with this one right away. Um, and then you've got sometimes weird edges or you just don't like the overall finish. Now this is a brighter surface. This is a pink PLA. I'm not sure um, how this, well there we go. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but sometimes you need a bigger part, so I got this here just in case. Anyhow, these torches, they normally have like little soldering tips on them. Um, I don't find the soldering iron tips last very long. They, uh, maybe a month or two, I find that the ceramic inside always shrinks and then falls out of the way. I don't know, maybe I run them too hot for the jobs I need them to do. But um, you need to be careful. They are butane. get a little flame off the end like that. For some reason mine here is being a pain. It is full. I don't know if you can hear that. There we go. It's not terribly stable, but as you can see there, it's a butane flame. And I'm just going to turn it down a bit. Nope, not that far. Turn it down too far. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Just taking a minute here to get the valve adjusted right. Now, I said I was going to start with this one. Another thing that you can't see right now is off uh, camera I have a little votive candle that I use to relight the tip on this because we're going to use it like a paintbrush and the strokes sometimes um, can cause the flame to go out. What you want to do is keep the passes oop, like that. Keep the passes short. And just evenly heat that surface and it will glass it whoops you will it's a very hot flame so you will um, 
begin to see the actual melt, but you gotta watch because some plastics stay wet looking once they're melting. And I've already made this one a bit too hot if you see the bubbles. The nice thing about PLA though is you can get to it very quick. And just flatten that down on a piece of cold metal. But uh, I did go too, too long on this one so my flame might be too hot. Let's turn that down a little bit. do is just be heating it up like this. Just some passes. Even though I've already screwed this one up. As you can see it gets um, shiny and it'll stay shiny like that. Although I've kind of buggered it up. Probably by being too close. That's the other thing you need to be really careful with these. Um, see there? can light PLA on fire pretty easy because it's a very hot uh, butane flame on the end of this is extremely hot and with the lighting in here I probably got too close and didn't notice it but uh, just quick passes um, sorry for the shaky hand here I don't know if we can see the bottom so that's melted and that's actually hardened right away too because I mean PLA hardens pretty quick And you just want to do little passes with the heat. You just want the surface to melt. But small parts are can be a little finicky. So we're going to move to a little bit bigger. This one should be more fun. Um, this is a special PLA. <laughs> it's a... Uh, a thermal PLA so it changes color with heat. I thought that would be kind of neat. But this will clean off any stringies just like you'd use a heat, a larger heat gun for. But you're, if you practice a little bit, as you can tell I'm a little bit out of practice, you keep your heat all in one area or you have more control of your heat with this. Let's see if I can put this up. Keep it in focus, it's rough to try and keep an eye on the camera and the flame at the same time. So of course it is a flame, so you gotta be extremely careful and be aware when you put it down. But it's just like painting. Except in this case your brush is a flame. And there, it's nice and shiny. I haven't uh, totally heated away the the lines yet. The other thing you need to remember is heat rises and you can take advantage of that. So sometimes putting your flame just below what you want to get will actually have a higher effect or an effect higher up on the part. So see that's kind of watery looking and of course it's going to expand. And then it will it will shrink shortly. Don't be afraid to blow on it. But uh, there, it's gone glossy. Oh, I might have warped that one a bit, but I put that down. And yeah, I can press that warp out. It's right at that temperature that you might be able to press the warp right out. Mostly the button kind of got in the way. I forgot about the button, but uh, that wasn't too bad um, Now we're gonna try this fellow If you notice I'm using a set of spring tweezers to hold the uh, Hold the parts because I don't really want to uh, burn my fingers. So make sure you got something good to hold And Again, sometimes you want to put the flame a bit below where you think it needs to go and uh, this also works better if you have multiple layers and what I'm trying not to do is uh, get out of focus here 
but it's hard to watch this and watch the camera at the same time so if I drift out of focus I'll apologize in advance Oop. I just want the surface to glaze over I don't know if I can hold this still enough for the camera probably should have brought one of my desktop vices but You don't want to spend too long on one side of the part. The PLA will slowly heat up and stay pretty warm. So if you warm it smoothly, and again, just brushing over it, little stringies and flyaways, and where support material were, like the bottom of that chin, this probably won't focus. It's hard for it to focus because I'm having a hard time holding it all still at the same time. But there was some roughness from support material under that chin. There, I think you can see it now. It's hard with the black, but uh, you can get right in there pretty close with the flame. And the support material pretty much goes away right quick because it sticks out and it can't really resist the heat. It's got no thermal mass, I guess. But uh, let's see if we can get that face shined up a little bit nice shiny predator or sorry this is a alien head take away my sci-fi card there it's hard to keep this in oops I bumped the camera there Summer got really hot. Just have to watch the smoke. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> Oops. My bad. The, uh, I wasn't paying attention and I heated up the metal. And if you can see, I created a, a hollow there. Um, that's a side effect of doing a smaller part, but and not paying attention. But I created a bit of a hollow in there. But if you're careful and you practice, and of course I'm doing this a little bit quick just for the video, sake of the video here. So I might be rushing this a bit. And actually we're seeing one of the other issues. You need to make sure you have a, f a fair number of top layers on your print sometimes you'll find that the top of the print opens up anywhere that the PLA is too thin you may be one layer thin you might want to give yourself three or four top layers but um, yeah, I really heated that side so if you can see there it's gone pretty much shiny now it might be hard to see from the video but uh, he's gone very shiny. Now you might be able to f see the um, the layers. Like you might be able to see the layers, like down at the lower jaw. Here, just clean that up. Um, the thing is, up here, like on the top, you can see what looks like the layers, but it's perfectly smooth here. It's actually the top layer is gone so smooth you can actually see into it. So it's a little bit translucent. Anyhow, so on the black there, it uh, might be a little bit rough to see. I'm just going to put the torch down for a second. Um, yeah, not too bad. A few goof ups. I overheated the head here. But uh, again, this is one of the things with practice. You won't get it right on the first go. And I'm just doing this quickly here. Let's try something else that's a bit more uh, visible. Just quickly here, because this video is running a bit longer than I intended. You can get these loose, loose or uh, flyaway type spots, and the torch can really 
seal them up, especially on uh, structural parts. I found it can uh, really make sure your layer, at least the outer edges of your layers, have bonded well. Um, bigger parts are better. I guess the higher thermal mass stops them from melting in onto themselves. I wouldn't know exactly about that, but uh, it seems to work. But you do got to watch for discoloration and uh, too much heat because that'll obviously warp your part. But uh, if you get it just right, uh, most most of the PLA that I have gets this nice glassy shiny look to it. And I'm just going to turn that off now. Set that down. So it might not look like much has changed on this one. Mm, a little shinier maybe. All right. I'm not going to go too much longer, but um, oops, still a bit hot. Um, yeah, some of the some of the little uh, flyways. Oop, that's hot back there. Some of the little flyways are better. This one, as we saw, um, he's gone totally smooth like glass, and very very hard. Um, the surface becomes extremely hard. In fact, I made a bottle opener, which, uh, oh, here's a good one. Maybe I'll get this in the clips here. Maybe you can see it better. The surface becomes uh, very smooth and very hard. Anyhow, this video went a little longer than I intended to. If you have any questions or comments, put them below. Uh, always remember to be safe. Um, this is fire. It does get extremely hot. You can melt some metals with this. Um, it'll turn brass bright orange, so be careful with these. This is just the burn somatic one that I was using here. And uh, practice, like as you can see this one here, there's some errors that came up on it. I got a little bit too hot in a few places, and uh, I accidentally heated up uh, the clamp, and the clamp pressed in a little bit there. Not too bad, but uh, it does smooth. And it's pretty quick. You're not waiting around like uh, for acetone vapors, that kind of stuff. Anyhow, uh, as I said before, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe as well. And I'll see you in the next video.